Hey, Jordan. Boom. All right, so I guess question one is what is Somatic? Yeah, so Somatic is a company that makes a bathroom cleaning robot for office buildings. You can see the BCR right there. That's our first product. And we autonomously clean commercial spaces, like office buildings, airports. Have you always had a passion for toilet cleaning? Yeah. That, when I was a little kid, I was like, I'm going to do this when I grow up. Yeah? No, for seriously, sure. though. Like, yeah. where, where, where did this come from? Yeah, basic idea. So early days, we were working on self-driving, actually. Okay, So we wanted to make robots, me and Eugene. And the idea was, OK, if you want to make a robot, like a Boston Dynamics kind of robot, it's a really hard challenge. So you got to start off moving around the world or actuation. That was the two ideas, like hands, kind of. And we said, OK, we'll start with moving around the world. We did self-driving for about two, two years, a little bit longer. And we learned some stuff from that, like weather is really, really hard. Um, you're moving fast, so you can kill somebody. So there's regulations. And that's a good thing, but it's also really hard for a startup to get to market, right? And there's a bunch of these things that you learn. It's not asynchronous. There's all these problems. So we took that kind of learning, okay, in the back of our head. And then also, I grew up uh, in Brooklyn, okay? My grandfather ran a restaurant. Let's go BK. I'm yeah, from Brooklyn. Yeah, New York City, yeah. So I worked in that restaurant as like a little kid, right? And my grandfather's kind of old school guy. He passed away recently. But um, the, the idea was his line was always, you want to work at the register? You want to kind of meet people, do something at the front? Got to start in the bathroom. So I already knew about, you know, kind of commercial cleaning. I knew it was a job that I didn't want to do. And I didn't want, you know, my kids to do it. It's a great job. Like it's a, you know, it's something that people need and so that type of thing that, you know, it's something that's really needed. But like at the end of the day, do you really want your kids to do that long term? And so the idea was, okay, machines could help us do this better. And then we were going from the self-driving. We said, okay, bathroom cleaning. Like why bathrooms though? They're inside, okay? So there's no weather to deal with. But there's special stuff about a bathroom. It's a static environment. So for this, let's say these bathrooms right here, okay? You can go here five years from now, even if they redo this whole place, the bathroom is pretty much the same, static environment. And then it's also that everything's bolted down, right? So toilet seats move in a predictable way, stall doors, sinks. So that's kind of a trick that we use, and that's why bathrooms. So can we, I assume there's no toilet up here for this particular robot to clean. There is no toilet. Thank you. Yeah. Production. But you have a video? Yeah, can we have we, a video, so maybe we can roll a video. It? Okay. Can we get? Who wants to see a bathroom being cleaned, right? Okay, so what you see right here is uh, this was our first ever deployment. And this is in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And the robot is going to clean the bathroom using a three-step touchless cleaning system. That's not something we invented, but it's al already used in the industry by people for decades, right? So the robot's going to start off spraying chemicals. That disinfects the area. Second step is it's going to use um, the same sprayer, but it's going to switch to just fresh water. And that removes any of the disinfectant and also any debris. And the third step you saw was it vacuumed the, the area dry. So the way we do that, and this is kind of a, a, the worst video game ever, if you imagine it. So we scan the bathroom. And then Eugene, the, my co-founder right there, he's actually cleaning the bathroom using VR. right? So if you ask the question, like, why now? Like, why, why is this possible now? Why not five years ago? Why not five years from now? We rely on a bunch of, like, a stack of technologies. So if you look at that arm, it's an orange kind of arm. It's off the shelf arm. And the prices just fall massively for something like that. Right? And another thing that we use, like a building block, is that VR. Right? So off the shelf, I just grab HTC Vive, and boom, I can now manipulate that robot um, in virtual reality. So why do we need virtual reality? Not just like buzzword, oh, you know, it's local, mobile, social, VR. The idea is, yeah. You literally just made me ill. Please don't do that. Throw up that. in my mouth a little bit saying that. So the idea for why VR. So if you try to program a robot the traditional way, they use a pendant. right? And there wasn't a need for this VR use, because you're going to do something like maybe grab a coffee and like pour it. You've seen some demos like that, or like um, in, in a welding situation, right? You're just kind of moving in a straight line 10,000 times in a row, right? But if you're doing something like what we're doing, we have enormous cleaning times, right? Because if you think about it, you're going into the bathroom. Every step is something. You're spraying. You're vacuuming. You're, you're, so you have all these steps, right? And, to do the, and then you have multiple bathrooms and, and all that. So to, to program that for different buildings and actually get the robot out, you need something that allows you to program the robot, if you will, uh, kind of really quickly. And VR is the solution for that. So just to clear, clarify, we don't do that. It's not, it's not like he's cleaning it and then real time it's spraying it. It's like a one time you it's teach it. It's a mapping. It's a mapping. And so when you sign on a client and they are like, yep, we'll take one of your robots, please, do they get an HTC Vive and are they the ones doing that? Or do you send Eugene? over to go play the worst video game in the world yeah. on behalf of them? Yeah, so it's a fantastic question. So, OK, 
had, let's say we, we get like a client, right? So they, they could be anywhere, right? The idea is that we just send them a box in the mail. It's like this big, it's a shoe box, we call it. And it's a sensor. You just walk the building. A human being just takes that, they walk the building. So the robot lives in a janitorial closet. They go down to the hallway, into the bathroom, elevator. So this robot will open doors and take the elevator, right? So the person just follows that same path. And what they're doing is they're capturing video and also LiDAR. So just like Google self-driving, all that kind of jazz. So we capture the area. It's an expensive sensor, but it's just a one time. And we capture that. So then we upload to that, that to the cloud. Again, we haven't visited the site at this point. Then anywhere our, in our office, just fully remotely, we clean the bathroom in virtual reality, right? And actually, you clean one toilet, you just copy paste because they're pretty much identical, right? Now you have that cleaning plan, download it to the robot, the robot starts cleaning, right? And so talk to me a little bit about like pricing and, and customer acquisition. Yeah. So another kind of like hugely important po point that I, I think is kind of like critical. So a couple of years ago, you've seen robots, you're like, where are all the robots? Like, we see a demo, it looks cool. I thought that all the time. I, I'm just, when I walk into this building, I see like tons of demos, but where are the working robots? Like, I, I, every, in my regular life, like, I go to the grocery store, I, I'm out in a, some building, I'm in the airport, where are all the robots? This is a robotics conference. I want to see like, who's the big company in robotics today? They have tens and tens of thousands of robots. In order to do that, you, you have Roomba, you have some really cool examples, but like, we need a lot more, or I want a lot more. And, and the idea is, uh, in order to do that, you got to keep prices really, really low. And so we use off-the-shelf components whenever possible, keep the price really low. So for our customers, we don't sell the robot. It's a monthly fee. So it's $1,000 a month. It's like a flat fee. And for that, you get eight hours a day, 40 hours a week. So like your classic shift. And they're saving about 50% cost. And I assume that that means that the humans who do this job are going to be losing their job. Yeah, so that, that's like a fantastic point also to talk about. And it's a really important point, right? So it's not a lot of robotics companies, you'll talk to them and, and founders will say something like, you know, oh, we're going to retrain and things like that. I think we have to talk about this issue kind of directly, and we, we try to do that with our customers. So first thing to, to say is that, like, practically speaking, our aim is to lower the amount of hours in this industry, right? So it's 860,000 people's job every single day to keep buildings clean and safe. And our job is to make those teams more efficient. So that you might say, like, oh, that sounds brutal. You're just taking away jobs. You, you should think about it the other way. The point of technology in general is to make people more productive. And when people are more productive, they get paid more, right? And so if everyone here is interested in higher wages for people, I think we all can agree on that that's a good thing. People should earn a living wage. We have to make those people more productive. And you give them tools to do that. And so it's not, we're not teaching them to code, that, that, kind of, you know, that kind of like ridiculous trope. We're saying, here's a tool. It's going to integrate into your team. It's not doing everything. We try to do as much as we can. And then as a team, all of you can make more money the business that needs to make money, they're making more profit. The end customer is getting a cheaper price, okay? And we're making money, so everyone's happy. How is that possible? It's like one word, everyone kind of here familiar with it. Technology, right? Two thumbs up for America. That's exactly what we want to do. That's the point of the company. Yeah, I get it. I think that, like, there is a question, um, you know, like you said, robotics and AI founders will often say, like, you know, we're going to retrain people, or that's yeah. a political conversation, sure. it's not really my problem. And I guess, like, what I, after years and years of doing robotics conferences and Disrupt and all of the stuff that we do and having those conversations, I do think that, like, there's, there's something to be said for, I'm going to be a part of that conversation. Like, I'm going to insert myself into the political system. I'm going to you know, whatever it might be sure. to actually help with the retraining. Because I don't know about you guys, but it's something that I'm concerned about, right? Like technology eating jobs and they're not being retraining programs. If policy won't handle it for us, then who will? So I just think it is important, and I appreciate you speaking frankly about it and being honest about the fact that, yeah, some jobs will go away, but we're working towards a bigger goal. So that's my little two cents on it. What is the greatest challenge for Somatic? Well, in robotics in general, I think in order to have a successful robotics company where you have lots and lots of robots out there, they need to be robust and not brittle. And what I mean by that is, you've seen a robot, you've seen it do a demo, but then can you deploy it in the real world, or is it just going to fail all the time? And if it fails all the time, basically it's not worth it for people to use it, and so they don't use it. It's just like a fun you know, kind of thing to look at. And our solution around that, like how, how we kind of manage that, two ways. Like first way, we try to build like really good systems, there's amazing software that obviously we're uh, building off of and hardware, which we talked about already. But now anybody, you know, with a little bit of work, you have this, uh, com a camera and you're doing some AI stuff and you could do something. And that's amazing. I mean, that's just building on, you know, standing on the shoulders of giants type of thing. But the other side, and this is a critical side that we talked about, is the hybrid side. So we rely on people like doing the cleaning. Mm -hmm. We integrate with the cleaning team because we, we can't do everything. So it, when there's a problem on, with a toilet, it's not exactly what we expect. 
we send a picture to the local janitorial staff, they come help the robot. So we're integrating into with people. So to, to deal with the challenge of how do you make this thing really robust and deployable, got to have both of those things. OK, and we are out of time, but I do want to hit you with one last thing. You just came out of stealth. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you so Somatic much. Somatic is real. Woo! So that's cool. And do you have any, like, very quickly, any highlights or anything you shared? Do you have any clusters you yeah, want to talk yeah. about? Yeah, yeah. So we have some big news. We're super excited to announce our first, like, huge customer. We can't say the exact name, but they're a Fang company. And we're just super excited to be deployed at that company. So we're actually working with the janitorial company for them. But, uh, you know, we're deployed at a Fang company. We're so, so excited to be working with them. Have you tried to find anyone from Berkeley to start shaking hands and selling robots to Berkeley, clean their toilets? I want to say yes. I suppose Why aren't you people. startup grinding? I did sales this morning. We were contacted by a couple of customers I'm this joking morning. joking with you? Oh, no, we're selling hard. <laughs> He's like, we're selling, I am fucking Jordan, selling. Jordan, we are selling hard right now. Okay, go get them. Thanks so much. Congratulations. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah, big really round of applause it. for Thank Schematic. you, guys.